morning from the Oklahoma Insurance Department. My name is Rachel Fan, and I work in the Communications Division here at OID. Thank you for joining us for our Medicare Mondays webinar series. For your awareness, I do want to mention that this webinar is being recorded. Before we get started, I wanted to share a little bit about what the Oklahoma Insurance Department, or OID, does. OID is a state agency, and we are responsible for regulating the insurance market and enforcing the insurance-related laws of the state. We have an entire team devoted to protecting consumers by providing them with accurate information and timely assistance. We can also deal with your insurance company if you cannot reach an agreement regarding a claim. If you would like to reach out to us for help or if you have any questions, you can call us toll-free at 1-800-522-0071 and you can also visit our website at oid.ok.gov. For today's webinar, you will be able to see and hear us, however, we cannot see or hear you. If you have a question, please feel free to post that in the chat. Down at the bottom of your screen, you will see several options, one of those being chat, and if you click on that, you can type your question there. We will save time to answer questions at the end of the webinar. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker, Ray Walker. Ray is the Divisional Director for the Medicare Assistance Program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department. Mr. Walker has over 20 years of experience working in and around the healthcare industry, primarily in insurance, and has had the privilege of speaking to groups across the state and around the country. Ray, over to you. Thanks, Rachel. And do I have the ball still? I believe you do. All right. Well, we'll give it a try and see what happens. Good morning, everybody. We're so glad you could join us today. Uh, today, we've got uh, several things that we want to talk about, but before we get started, I wanted to remind you the Medicare Assistance Program at the Oklahoma Insurance Department is a program that's actually funded by the Administration for Community Living, and we're there to help consumers answer all their questions related to Medicare. Anything that you've got that's a, a Medicare-related topic that you may be questioning or something, you can feel free to reach out to us and we'll do our best to help you with uh, whatever's uh, on your mind. Uh, the also the other thing that I wanted to point out is we actually partner with other agencies around the state to provide this same kind of counseling. So if you don't live in the Oklahoma City metro area and you'd like to talk to someone who's closer to where you live, uh, give us a call and we'd be happy to get you connected with whatever agency is in your area so that you can sit down and talk to somebody. Also wanted to remind you, we've got more of our Medicare Mondays coming up. In August, we'll be talking about Medicare options. You know, what are the different options that are available to beneficiaries along with their traditional Medicare, such as Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare supplement plans. Also, some people have retirement benefits and VA benefits. So we want to kind of go over those because, you know, one size doesn't fit all. So we want to make sure that people understand that just because your best friend is on a plan that works well for them doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best option for you. Then on September 11th, we're going to be talking about getting ready for open enrollment. It's that time of year when anybody that's on Medicare or soon to be on Medicare suddenly starts getting all sorts of mail and there's all these commercials and, and things like that, phone calls. So we want to help people, you know, kind of get prepared and understand what to expect and what decisions they might need to be prepared to make. Then we'll talk in October about open enrollment itself. That's what runs from October 15th through December 7th and what decisions a person might need to make during that time to make sure that they're making the most out of their income for 2024. Then Medicare marketing guidelines, you know, all of these people that are sending you those postcards and and calls and all that other stuff. There are certain guidelines that they're supposed to be following that are set by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So, and that some of those have changed for this year. So we'll go over those at our uh, event on November 6th. And then lastly, for uh, 2023, we're gonna talk about the Me Medicare changes that are coming up for 2024. There are some changes that will have an impact on Medicare beneficiaries. So we'll make those the last topic uh, for this year. Also wanted to remind everybody, we've got our fraud prevention conferences going on this Friday, uh, starting at 9 a.m. We'll be talking about Social Security and Medicare fraud. These are being held at Metro Tech at their Spring Lake, Spring Lake campus on Martin Luther King. 
And here on the screen, you see the uh, QR code that you can use to register, or you can uh, call the phone number at the bottom down there. So either way, you can get registered for that event. If you do plan on attending, I would strongly recommend that you do register uh, ahead of time. So, you know, if you need to take a picture of this slide or something like that so that you can call, or you can call uh, our office and we'd be happy to get that number to you. So let's go ahead and get going now. Our topic for today is low income assistance programs. Uh, Medicare is a great program and it covers the majority of the costs that are out there for individuals, but it doesn't cover everything. So just as kind of a refresher, let's talk about what Medicare does cover. The basic components of the Medicare system are Medicare Part A and Part B. That's the part that's been around since 1965. Now, for most people, they don't pay a Part A monthly premium. That's because you've been paying into the system. That's those FICA taxes that have been coming out of your check for at least 10 years or 40 quarters, as they say in the regulations. So you don't have to pay a monthly premium for your Part A. For anyone who has worked less than that 10 year period or the 40 quarters, they can still get Part A, but they're gonna have to pay for part or all of it based on the information on this slide. Now, besides the Part A premium, there is a Part A deductible, primarily on the inpatient side. The inpatient deductible for this year is $1,600, and that covers each 60-day benefit period. Uh, I don't want to go into a lot of detail about what a benefit period is because that's not our topic today. But just know that there is this Part A deductible for inpatient care of $1,600. If you'd like to know more about benefit periods, reach out to one of our counselors and we'd be happy to go over that with you. What does Part A cover? Well, we've already said inpatient hospitalization is one of the, of the uh, items that's covered by your Part A. That does not include emergency room, or observation status. Those are covered by Part B. Skilled nursing facility. If you're not familiar with that, a skilled nursing facility is one of those facilities that you go to. Maybe you've been in the hospital for a while and you don't need that level of care anymore, but you're not ready to go home. The doctor wants you to still go somewhere for maybe some rehab or uh, IV therapy, something like that. So a skilled nursing facility is a place that you can go for a period of time to continue recuperating. That's also covered by Part A. Hospice care, that is the care for those individuals who have a terminal condition and have elected not to receive curative care. And then home health is also covered by Part A. Part B has a monthly premium and everybody has to pay this. It's $164.90 a month in 2023. People in a higher income tax bracket might have to pay more than this $164.90, but since today's topic is on low income subsidy, I probably don't need to spend a lot of time on that. Along with the monthly premium, there's a deductible for Part B. For 2023, the deductible is $226, and that's an annual deductible. So the first thing a beneficiary is going to pay at the beginning of the year is that $226 deductible after which Medicare will pay approximately 80% of their costs, leaving about 20% for the beneficiary to pay. As far as what Part B covers, it's gonna cover outpatient medical services, things like the emergency room, doctor's visits, lab work, x-rays, medical equipment, things like wheelchairs, CPAP machines, as well as preventive services. Next, let's talk about Part D. So Part A and Part B were the first parts of the Medicare system. Part D is the new kid on the block. It's only been around since 2006. Currently, there are 24 different Part D prescription drug plans available in Oklahoma. Every state's a little bit different. And these plans are going to vary significantly. They're going to vary based on the monthly premium for that particular plan. The cheapest plan in Oklahoma this year has a $7.10 monthly premium. The most expensive one is over 100. The average plan this year in Oklahoma is about $32.74. Now these plans can also have an annual deductible. The most the deductible can be in 2023 is $505. 
Then along with that, there's certain copays and coinsurances that go with those drugs. Now, if you're not familiar with these terms, a copay is a set amount of money, such as $5, $10, $15. A coinsurance is a percentage, such as 5%, 10%, et cetera. Also, these drug plans have what's called a drug formulary. That's the list of drugs that are covered by that particular plan. And these plans don't have all the same drugs on their formulary. So it's very important when you're selecting a Part D plan, you gotta make sure that all the prescriptions that you take are on the formulary for that plan. Then lastly, what varies about these plans is the pharmacies that they're contracted with. Not every plan uses all the same pharmacies and you can save money by getting on a plan that your pharmacy is on their list of contracted providers. Now, even with Part D prescription drug coverage, prescription costs are very, very high these days. And it's before 2006, there was no assistance. There was nothing to help pay for those. So the addition of the Part D prescription drug plan has helped tremendously, but it's still not covering everything that some people need covered. So they created these assistance programs to help cover some of the costs that are left over for Part A, for Part B, as well as for Part D. So today we're gonna to talk about those, some of these plans that are there to help you with your prescription costs or with your monthly premiums, or maybe all of the above. First, we're gonna talk about the Medicare savings programs. Now, most people are familiar with Medicaid. Medicaid is that program that exists in all states that's there to help low income uh, individuals who need assistance, not just with their health care costs, but with things like housing uh, and food and things of that nature. Now, the Medicare savings programs are kind of like Medicaid in that they are a shared program between the state government and the federal government. Where they differ is where Medicaid might help pay, you know, money that goes toward rent or for food or something like that, the Medicare savings programs are very specific to Medicare related costs. In other words, healthcare costs. So that's gonna be the big difference. The other difference is a person can actually have a higher income and asset limit and qualify for a Medicare savings program than they would for traditional Medicaid. Now, the first one we're gonna talk about today is the Qualified Medicare Beneficiary or the Quimby program. This, as I said before, is a shared program between the state and the federal government. And if a person qualifies for the Quimby program, it's gonna pay for their Part A and B premiums. So they wouldn't have that $164.90 a month uh, Part B premium. And it's also gonna pay the Part A and Part B cost sharing. So any of the deductibles or co-payments or co-insurance associated with their Part A or Part B, Part B medicine. So it's, it's a very valuable benefit to have. So the income limits for 2023 for a person to qualify for the Quimby program are as an individual $1,215 a month or as an individual and spouse $1,643 per month. The resource limits for 2023 as an individual are $9,090 or as a married couple, 13,630. So I encourage you, if you think you might fall within those limits, now's the time to look at that. And we'll talk about how you apply for these programs here in just a moment. The next program we're gonna talk about is the Specified Low Income Medicare Beneficiary Program or the SLIMB program. This is also a shared program between the state and the federal government, and anyone who qualifies for this program, it will pay for their Part B monthly premium, that $164.90 a month. The income limits for 2023 for the SLIMB program are as an individual $1,458, or as a married couple $1,972. You'll notice that the resource limits are the same for the Quimby program and the Slimby program. And the same will be true for the next program that we talk about. So the resource limits don't really change. However, the income does fluctuate. The last one we're gonna talk about today is the qualifying individual. 
another shared program between the state and federal government. This one also pays your Part B premiums, which is that $164.90 a month. What's different about the qualifying individual program is depending on the state that you live in, you may or may not have to apply for this program on a, an annual basis. So depending on which state you live in, uh, you might have to actually apply for this each month, where, uh, excuse me, each year. Whereas with the SLIMBY program, as long as everything looks the same, it just rolls over. So depending on what state you live in. Currently, I believe Oklahoma is one of the states where you do not have to apply every year, but I would strongly encourage you to, since we don't at the insurance department administer this program, this would be a conversation you would wanna have with the folks at DHS. The income limit for 2023 for an individual is $1,640 and for a married couple, $2,219. And then again, the resource limits are the same as they are for the other two programs that we previously discussed. So what counts as a resource or an asset? A savings account, checking account, any stocks or bonds or mutual funds you may have, a retirement account that you're drawing income from, or any real estate would count. Now, what does not count as a resource or an asset would be the house that you're living in. If that's if that your primary house is not going to count as a resource or an asset. However, if you've got like rental property, or maybe you own some property down the road or a farm or something like that, that would count as a resource or asset. Also, one, uh, one car does not count as an asset as well. Household goods and wedding and engagement rings do not. Burial spots that you've already purchased. Uh, burial funds up to $1,500 per person, as well as a life insurance policy with a cash value of less than $1,500. Now, what counts as income? Think of it as anything that's coming in. So that's gonna be salary that you're earning, retirement, VA benefits, uh, et cetera. Anything like that that's money coming in the door, that's what's going to count as your income. So how does one apply for the Medicare savings programs? These programs are in Oklahoma. They're administered by the Oklahoma Healthcare Authority, but the enrollment process is actually handled by the Oklahoma Human Services Department. So where you're going to go is if you get online, you can go to OKDHS Live at OKDHSLive.org, and on that screen, you'll see a button for Apply for Benefits. Now, if you're not comfortable doing this over the computer, you can also call on the telephone, 405-522-5050. And it's got one of those phone trees that we all enjoy so much because you got to press one for this and two for that and three for the other thing and all that. However, if you, once you get the phone answers and it starts giving you options, press one if you like English, and then if you press one again, it will get you to the right place where you can start the application process. So we've talked about the Medicare savings programs. They're gonna cover the medical costs associated with Medicare. Now let's talk about the prescription drug costs. The program we're talking about is called Extra Help. And whereas the Medicare savings programs are a shared program between the state and the federal government, extra help is at the federal level. It is administered by the Social Security Administration. It's also referred to as the Low Income Subsidy, or LIS, so some of you may have heard it called that. It's going to cover all or part of the Part D Prescription Drug Plan monthly premium. So that's the monthly premium for the plan you're on. We talked about how there's 24 different plans and how that monthly, monthly premium can fluctuate significantly. Uh, so it's going to help with that cost. It also significantly reduces the copays that you pay for your prescriptions. So as you know, when you go to the pharmacy to pick up your drugs, there's a certain amount that comes out of your pocket. Sometimes it's $2, sometimes it's $5. Unfortunately, sometimes it's $1,000. So being on extra help would significantly reduce the copays you pay for those covered prescriptions. It also provides a special enrollment period for you to be able to enroll or switch plans once per quarter. So let's say that you're in the middle of the year and the doctor prescribes a new medication for you, and it turns out that that particular drug isn't on the formulary for the plan that you're currently enrolled in. 
you would have the ability to switch to a new Part D prescription drug plan that would be effective the first of the following month. And you can do that once per quarter in the first three quarters of the year. So that helps keep you on, on a plan that will cover all of your medications. It also eliminates the Part D late enrollment penalty. Uh, you may or may not be aware, a lot of people didn't get enrolled in Part D for whatever reason. Maybe they weren't taking any prescription drugs, or maybe they didn't think they could afford a prescription drug plan because they were on limited income. So consequently, if there is a person out there who is not enrolled because of the cost and they meet the qualifications, the income and asset limits, then they're going to be able to uh, enroll in Part D and uh, in the uh, extra health program and they won't uh, have the late enrollment penalty if they qualify. Uh, also, if you automatically, if you're already qualified for Medicaid or the Medicare savings programs, you already meet the extra help qualifications. So you're already going to be at the income and asset limits for those programs as well. Now, don't assume that you are enrolled in extra help. Typically, it's supposed to happen automatically, but we have in the past had situations where someone uh, somehow the switch didn't get thrown. So we always want to make sure that you're getting all of the benefits. Uh, and assistance that you're eligible for. The income limits for 2023 for individuals, it's $1,640. In a married couple, it's $2,219. Resource limits uh, are the same as you saw before with those other programs. And they, the same guidelines as far as what counts as income and what counts as a resource. To apply for extra help, you do it a little bit differently. You can go to the website benefitscheckup.org and do your own application if you'd like. You can call us at our office. This is our phone number, 1-800-763-2828. And then we also partner with Oklahoma Human Services on this particular program. And here you'll see their website. This is kind of, like I said, this is very long. You might want to take a picture of it with your phone if you're going to enter it directly. Uh, or you can go to that Oklahoma DHS live.org website that we talked about before to do that application. So, uh, either way, even if you're not sure you would meet the qualifications, it never hurts to apply. There's no cost associated with it. So we always want to encourage people apply. If anything changes, apply again. Uh, do what you can to try and, and get on these assistance programs. They're there, they're available for you. It's not charity, folks. These are programs that as you've been working through the years, you've paid into. So you might as well take advantage of them. It's much more important for you to be on the medications you need, to be going to the doctor when you need to go to the doctor, rather than wait until you're so terribly sick that you wind up in the hospital. So please uh, don't don't hesitate. Now, there are other options. If a person doesn't meet the income and asset limits for extra help, there are other things out there that might be able to assist you. The pharmacy discount programs, you know, the things like GoodRx uh, and things like that that are out there. Rx for Oklahoma is a program that's operated through the Oklahoma Department of Commerce. And these individuals, they can actually help you find these discount programs through the drug manufacturers. And I've seen RX for Oklahoma do some really miraculous things for people who are on some very high cost medications. So definitely reach out to these people. There's an RX for Oklahoma program. They're in different agencies around the state as well at this main, at this main number at the Oklahoma Department of Commerce. So take advantage of that as well. Also, talk to your plan about any formulary or tier exceptions. It might be in the middle of the year that your doctor adds a different medication that's not on the formulary for the plan that you're on. There, are, there is a process that you can go through to make a request to your current Part D plan to ask that they cover that drug for the remainder of the year. And if you'd like more information about how to, to do those things, uh, give us a call at our office and we'd be happy to walk you through that. Now, lastly, I wanted to touch a base about pharmacy and prescription drug fraud. Uh, just like there's Medicare fraud on the healthcare side, fraud can occur on the prescription drug side as well. So we really need all beneficiaries to be on the lookout for different things and report them. That's the critical thing. 
So look for charges on your Medicare statement for things like prescriptions or refills that you never picked up or that were never prescribed for you. Uh, drugs that were prescribed by a provider that you never saw. Uh, more medication quantity than you were prescribed. Maybe what you got was a 30 day supply of a medication, but what you see on your Medicare statement is a charge for a 60 day supply. Or a different, more expensive medication than the one that you were prescribed. Maybe you were prescribed a generic and that what the charge on your Medicare notice shows as uh, a brand name drug. Or if the pharmacy provides you less medication than what was per prescribed, or if they were to give you expired medications. Also, uh, free or discount prescription uh, drugs without your doctor's order, but then they turn around and bill Medicare. That would also be a red flag. Uh, also, pharmacies aren't supposed to offer you gift cards or compensation in exchange for using their pharmacy. That's considered a no-no. Uh, if the pharmacy automatically refills a prescription that you no longer need and then bills Medicare, and you see that on your statement, that also needs to be reported, uh, assuming that you didn't pick up the drug. So if you do suspect prescription drug, if you do suspect prescription drug fraud, uh, give us a call at the same office. We, one of our other grants is the SMP program, which stands for Senior Medicare Patrol. And we can talk you through that to identify, is this really a situation of fraud and what steps we might need to take after that? So there's our phone number, 800-763-2828, as well as our website. Now, are there any questions that we might need to address? Yeah, Ray, we've had a couple questions come in. The first one is really pretty simple. So they just want to know if the slides are going to be available. And I do want to let everyone know that if you visit the MAP website, which is map.oid.ok.gov, and I did put that in the chat, you can see all of our webinar recordings, which have the slides on demand at any time under the educational videos tab. So those are available for you all. And we typically get the recordings out by the afternoon of um, the same day as the webinar. So for the next question that we have, um, so they wanna know what the state of Oklahoma benchmark is for Part D premium. And you may have covered this already, Ray. You know, I didn't put the benchmark uh, I think our benchmark is the same as it is for uh, the at most of the other states. We don't vary significantly, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. And what they're talking about when they say the benchmark is the extra help program is going to cover your Part D monthly premiums, but it's only going to cover it up to a certain point. That typically is around $31, $32, something like that. Now, what happens if a person is on medications that to get all of their prescriptions covered, they need to be on a plan that has a higher monthly premium than that $31 or $32? Extra help will still cover their monthly premium up to that $31. So let's say that the cheapest plan that would actually cover that person's medications is actually a plan that has like a $45 monthly premium. So extra help would cover that first $31 or $32, then the individual would have to pay the balance of that. So that's kind of the purpose line. It's still a very valuable uh, program. It still lowers their co-pays, but uh, in some situations it may not be 100%. Thank you, Ray. Those were all the questions that we had in the chat. Okay, looks like we're almost, yeah, we're just right down to our time. Uh, appreciate everybody joining us today. Uh, we hope that you'll be with us again next month. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us. You can always send questions to this same website, map.oid.ok.gov. And uh, we'll be happy to, uh, whether it has to do with today's uh, presentation or any other questions related to Medicare, or you can call us on our phone number, 1-800-763-2828. We'd love to hear from you. So thank you again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next uh, month. Oh, hang on, Ray. We did have one more question. Oh, I apologize. It just snuck in the chat. Um, okay, let's see. So they want to know if the number qualifications for QI-1 and the LIS were the same. I'm not sure what that means. 
Um, my recommendation for this question would be go ahead and uh, reach out to MAP via email. You can um, reach out to them. Ray, what's the MAP email address for that question? MAP.OID.OK.GOV. Great. Yep. Reach out and we will um, try our best to help you. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's webinar.